Okay. Um, this is another quick tutorial on what was asked by somebody on how to get sort of these vectory looking lines in 3D as was referenced in this piece here. Um, I'm assuming the person who asked the question is referring to this effect here with the yellow and the red going into the box. Uh, it's actually quite easy in 3D, so that's where we're going to go. Here in 3D Studio Max, um, there's many different ways you can create some an extruded line. So, I mean, I won't get completely into that. I mean, you can just draw a spline. Um, like if you go to your splines here and draw a line, and then under the rendering you can turn on thickness, make it rectangular, however you want to do it to make your line. Um, the way that I found that produces the results I prefer is to make a um, an editable poly, which is just a box that's really got a ton of segments on it. So, um, like, I don't know where that one went. One second. Okay, so like this line here, um, if we look at it in the viewport, I'll zoom out. This line is actually just sort of snaking its way through the scene here. What this is is actually a box. If I turn off the modifier, you can see it's a collection of three boxes actually that have three different colored boxes that have um, been lined up next to each other. And if I go to the wireframe, you can see that they have tons of segments. That'll make it nice and smooth when it bends. And then all you have to do is once you have your poly, you pick your modifier out of your list here. And the modifier I use is the path deform binding. And once you apply it, it'll ask you to pick a path. Once you pick that path, which is just a spline running through the scene here, you'll see that it bends your um, boxes to follow that path. So now they're curving right along the spline. And then if you edit that spline at any point, like this one's um, probably using one of these curves. Yep, that's it. Then if you grab the point of your spline and start moving it around, you can see that your, uh, your boxes are going to follow that spline wherever it goes. Makes it really quite easy to manipulate a box in your scene this way. Um, once you've done that and you have your box doing what you want it to do, um, your options here under path deform are like percentage and stretch and all that, and you, you can play with them. It really doesn't take much playing to understand what they do. Percent is just how far along the path it goes, like you can see it's traveling here. Stretch is how much it stretches. You can't tell with this just because it's lines. You can't tell that it's stretching, but if this was an object that had more unique features than when I stretched it, you'd see that it was getting pulled pretty hard. Rotation is along the spline how much it rotates, and twist is along the spline how much it twists. So you can get some really cool effects if you play with that one. You can see here how it's kind of curving. Um, once you've done that, I guess it's just up to you however you want to light your scene in order to make it look vectory. Usually I just stick with a skylight ambient lighting kind of situation. So in something like this, if I were to render it, you can see that you get it's just flat color. Those textures are just colors. I mean, there's really nothing special about the textures there. You've got uh, loaded here. I mean, you've got a red one, got an orange one, and you got a dark gray one. That's all that was used. And under advanced lighting, I just have a light tracer on with a skylight to produce that really soft lighting effect. And then uh, if you look at the the renders that were produced out of that file, it's not nearly that complex. You can see all the different layers I have here. I actually, if I turn some of these off for you, oh, that's really nasty. 
as is that. This right here is just one of the lines rendered from that scene on its own. And then we have this was rendered on its own. It's sort of the line passing through these boxes over here to the edge. And then we have, that was actually just done in Photoshop, as is that. And then just different elements. I know you just play, do your composition how you want. So I guess using 3D Studio Max, it's just a manner of bending boxes along, this, along a spline. That's the way I do it. So uh, I hope that was helpful in terms of producing a vectory spline sort of effect like this. Um, yeah, I mean, you can stretch anything along a spline. This instance was just a box. Have fun with it.